How do we know there are tiny things in a drop of pond water? We can use a microscope to view the pond water. Imagine you could shrink yourself and walk into a tiny cell. Well, what is it like inside a cell? Is it a fantastic, it's a fantastic journey. Fascinating. Fascinating. Fast, Very fast. Close. Thank you so it much. It feels like you're playing when you're actually learning. Like sometimes you could like play a game and not even know that you're learning. You're actually having fun and you realize it and then you realize that you're learning while you're doing it. And I have to ask that question, what hat are the kids going to wear in this mission that they're going to be on? And that's part of the curriculum design process. I think most teachers do curriculum design with, okay, what do they need to learn? But at Quest, it's what do they need to learn? How are we going to engage them? And what role are the kids going to be stepping into? And what story are the kids going to be stepping into? So it's a, all a part of creating this narrative. HTTP, HTTP, colon slash slash. That's the exact thing you put in front of the website. Yeah, thank you. Are you sure that's what you're seeing? Yeah, HTTP. That's really weird. I totally thought your specimen number was going to be a plant cell. Wow. That is ODO. That is ODO. The light switch is red. D-E. That second letter is an E. What? E? Greetings, TWTW students. I'm Dr. Smalls. I work for Shrinkley Labs. I am honored to say you are invited to compete in the 2013 Shrinkley Labs Cell City Design Competition. The need to know is created by this cast of characters. There's a teeny little doctor named Dr. Smalls, and he has shrunken himself and put himself inside of the body of one of his patients because he was trying to find out what this like mystery disease was. And in shrinking himself, he lost all of his medical vocabulary, and he sends my students a communique. So the need to know is help get me out of this body I'm trapped and help cure my patient. So it's actually like completely ridiculous. But, and the kids know it's a game. But it's so fun for them to become a part of this narrative that they do get right in. And they do get involved in, and start figuring out the clues of, well, where is Dr. Smalls now? Well, we know he's in this hollow space. And they start learning about the body from basically these clues of his location in the body. So they know that it's all made up and they know it's all just play, but it's fun for them. It's much more fun than just, you know, PowerPoint after PowerPoint, and now we're gonna learn about the respiratory system, boys and girls. I think we play games at Quest to Learn because it helps us incorporate learning into having fun. You could learn from a game and be like, oh, that was so fun, and then like, like read like a book and be like, oh, that was fun. It leads some kids to get sidetracked. Well, you know, this is all, this isn't real or what, what I don't care about Dr. Smalls, but for 99% of the kids, it's like, they're totally in.